Good morning, Seven Lakes. Please stand for the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. As we begin another school day, let us take a moment to silently think about our day, our activities, and what we hope to accomplish. Good morning, Spartans. I am Miss Abel, the Seven Lakes High School Testing Coordinator. Next week, Wednesday, October 19th, we will be administering the PSAT NMSQT to all 10th and 11th grade students. Therefore, that day's schedule will be a little different. Lunches are projected to begin at 1145 after all tests are turned in. There will be a PA announcement to release all students to fourth period or to A lunch. So students, please prepare for a later than normal lunch on Wednesday. While all juniors and sophomores will be testing that morning, from 725 to 1145, seniors, you are to report to the main gym first and second period to receive your homeroom assignments. All seniors that attend Miller, you will run your regular schedule. Freshmen, your homeroom assignments will be posted in the freshman entrance and near the pack next week on Tuesday. Report to your homeroom promptly Wednesday at 725 to begin your eventful morning. Sophomores and juniors, your testing rooms will be, assignments will be posted on Monday before the end of the day. Testing room assignments will be posted in the rotunda for you. In addition, sophomore assignments will be posted near the restrooms in the 2600 and the 2200s. Junior, your testing room assignments will be posted in the rotunda as well as the 1600 main hallway. All juniors are to report to the Seven Lakes High School campus that morning. There will be no Miller classes for you, juniors only. Please make sure that you have a working calculator by Tuesday, the day before the test. There will not be any calculators handed out the morning of the test, so please come prepared. If you have any questions regarding the calculator that you have, or if you need one, please contact your math teacher. Good luck and thank you for your time. Passionate. Teamwork. Dedicated. Family. Sensational. It's team 13. It's Mrs. Hampshire's room number that's where everything happens in student council. Um, my name is Ji Zhang. I'm a senior at Seven Lakes High School and I'm currently the student council president. My name is Nassim Denari. Uh, I'm a senior here at Seven Lakes and uh, I'm the vice president of student council. Uh, to me, student council is um, it's a community, you know, we try to come together, you know, try to help the students of Seven Lakes, the staff, everyone, uh, the community of Seven Lakes. And really it's kind of like a family where we just get to, you know, help other people. And uh, I really enjoy it. SOS is Spartan Out Serving. It's, it used to be an independent organization that includes all the volunteers in our school and provide opportunities for people to volunteer outside of school. But a few years ago, Student Council incorporated SOS into one of our community service committee. Now SOS is part of Student Council. So first, Student Council officers, we're not, uh, we're not elected by our class. And uh, we're actually just put together by our advisor, um, Ms. Hampshire. She you know, decides where we think, after you know, we're interested in the position, where we, she thinks we'd fit best. And um, also, uh, our class officers, 
they do a little bit, you know, a couple different things than us. You know, they'll like do stuff for our whole school, whereas you know they'll do stuff for individual classes, as you know, 2017 class of 2018 stuff like that. Student Council involved in a lot of things. As I mentioned before, homecoming is our biggest project of the year. We have all the appreciation weeks, teacher appreciation, custodian appreciation, school boards appreciation, um, and then we have some fun activity for teachers throughout the year, like Halloween bingos. We have Valentine's heart for all the students, and that's about it. So I think Student Council is unique from other organizations because um, we try to get everybody together in on everything that we're doing. You know, it's very it's very open to everybody and it's very non-exclusive. Um, the official deadline has already passed. It was October the 3rd, but you can still join by submitting a form and $25 to Mrs. Hampshire in room 1013. Hey there, Seven Lakes, and welcome to a new segment called The Spartan Review. This week we thought we'd try something new and do a movie review, and today's film is about an emotionally confused suburban high school teenager. Directed by Nicholas Ray and premiering in 1955, Ripple Without a Cause is about troublemaking teen Jim Stark, who, after moving to a new town, is expected to have a new start. While searching for some stability, Stark forms a bond with a disturbed classmate Plato and falls for local girl Judy. However, Judy is the girlfriend of neighborhood tough Buzz. When Buzz violently confronts Jim and challenges him to a drag race, Jim's real troubles begin. Now I for one love this movie, mainly because of how it can relate to us high schoolers on a level of pride and just trying to fit in, as well as judging characters based on how they act. Another great aspect of this film was Nicholas Ray's signature use of color in the cinemascope which was an anamorphic lens series used from 1953 to 1967 and was used for shooting widescreen films. And the use of different camera angles and settings really captured a different feel in each scene. James Dean also did an incredibly great job of taking on a character who was someone who never was looking for a fight but somehow always managed to find one. And the greatest feature of this film is how it creates characters who you are emotionally invested to and can feel real connection towards. Overall, Rebel Without Cause is a movie with relatable characters and lots of emotional appeal that I recommend to anyone who is interested in watching it. And thank you Spartans for watching this week's very first Spartan Review. This is our new video wall. Um, it was installed um, at the end of September, the 22nd and the 23rd. Then the speakers were installed a few days later. Um, it was donated to us by our graduating class of 2016. We're actually still in the process of making the changes um, as a result of the video wall. Um, it was kind of one big vision, um, but it's happening in different stages. So eventually, a lot of the shelving that we have now that housed our, a lot of our print, um, nonfiction, and reference will um, be removed from the library, and then what's left of the shelving will be rearranged to open up the space in front of the video wall, and we'll add um, more um, flexible seating and furniture so that um, students and teachers can sit in that area for lessons and projects and collaboration and just different um, things that it can be used for. And then on a daily basis, we'll show um, announcements, um, Slamcast, uh, Spartan Time TV, and then we'll have some type of um, news program playing most of the time for um, current events and things like that. 
Good morning, Seven Lakes. It's time for this week's sports report. Our girls' varsity volleyball team took the lead in District Tuesday by sweeping Katy High School. The Spartans won the first two sets 25 to 17 and the third set 25 to 20. Our girls play at Taylor tonight as they push on towards the playoffs. Our tennis team recently knocked off top 25 ranked College Park 14 to 1, then defeated top 10 ranked Clements last Tuesday. This week, they beat Clements 12 to 4 and Morton Ranch 19 to 0 to win the district championship. This year, our tennis team outscored their district opponents by a combined score of 109 to 4. We will host the area playoffs next week. Our first round match will be on Tuesday at 3.30. If we win, we will play all day on Friday at our courts. Come out and watch the Spartan tennis team as they begin their playoff run. The cross country teams are training this weekend in preparation for their district meet next weekend. Come out to Bear Creek Park on October 21st to cheer them on as they run towards their district championship. After opening the season with a win over Memorial, our varsity football team recently defeated nearby Tompkins 24-16. Let's take a look at some of this season's highlights. In the season opener, Dalton Wood stands in the shotgun, handing off to Isaac Hill for a 15-yard gain up the middle. Next, Wood passes into the flats to Keelan Johnson, who makes a number of Mustangs miss for a 20-yard gain. Wood then looks right, scrambles left, and finds Johnson on a fade route where he outleaps the defender in the end zone. With the Falcons driving, Derek Jones intercepts a pass over the middle and returns it 40 yards, juking many of the Falcon offensive players. Against Tompkins in the second quarter, Michael Batten drops back and delivers a deep ball with pinpoint accuracy to Jaquan Bloomfield, who burns a Tompkins defender for a 91-yard touchdown. Against Drake Jesuit, Michael Batten hands off to KJ Leggins for an outside run gaining 13 yards. Drake next attempts to run the ball up the heart of the Spartan defense, but they swarm to gang tackle the Crusader running back. Dalton drops back and finds David Uguebu on a seam route up the middle for a hard-fought 30-yard game. Wood again drops back to find Jaquan Bloomfield on the right side, who turns out the Jets to outrun the Drake defense. Catch the Spartans in action tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at Road Stadium as they take on the Taylor Mustangs. That's all for this week's sports report. Have a great weekend, Spartans.